Hey guys, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I've got a video where I'm going to be discussing the differences between collecting cards and collecting comic books, and um, why I choose to buy one or the other, and how different are the two hobbies really. Um, so I'm going to start out with the first question is why I buy one or the other, and I don't put up here like you know the the biggest reason, but the biggest reason is availability, right? So if I can't really find comic books I want or sports cards I want, but I can find the other, then I buy those. <laughs> so that's really the most common answer, right? Like I can't find some sports cards I want, but there's some comic books available that you know fit my criteria, so I'm going to buy them. Now, when I look for sports cards, you know what I'm looking at is value a lot of times. So, um, and I, I had a video recently where I talked about overpaying and I have found myself in recent times more likely to overpay to get what I want because as my collection's grown and I, my portfolio has grown as well, you know, it's harder to find value um, pieces I can add. Um, and I would look at it like this, like um, say a lot of 70s Hall of Famers are still affordable and you might get them under VCP uh, or under last eval com eBay comps because they're a little more available and uh, you might get a, a deal on one of those cards. But in general, the cards I need, like the 50s and 60s, are not as available. They don't come up for auction as much in the, in the conditions I, I collect. So therefore, to, to, to obtain one of those uh, assets, I have to overpay in, in a lot of instances. Um, so again, I talk about, you know, filling out my portfolio. I'm looking at cards as more investments and having diversification. Um, and again, I do have collections inside of that portfolio, like Clemente, Jeter, Griffey, Chief Bender. And not all of them make a lot of sense. Like Chief Bender, you know, isn't going to gain, isn't doubling and tripling in value like uh, Jeter and Griffey and Clemente have been. So, you know, some make more sense than others in terms of investing, uh, air quotes. Um, but then, you know, I do buy to see if I can sell it later, right? So this is like the flipping aspect. Um, and then, you know, speculation or prospecting, you know, buying young players, hoping, you know, based on statistical analysis and hoping they do better later. Now for comic books, it's, it's a lot different. And even though it sounds similar sometimes, but again, you know, first thing recently or Mostly I've been buying comic books that I like that fits in my collections. My two biggest ones are my Spider-Man collection and, and my Alex Schomburg collection of Golden Age covers. Um, but a lot of times, you know, when I look at comic books, it's really do they speak to me? You know, when I look at the cover or the storyline or the artist, it's something I want to own to look at or to read or because I like you know, the artist itself. So like, you know, there's a lot of things about just looking at the asset and saying like, wow, I really, really like that. I really want to own it because I want to display it. I want to put it on my wall, you know, that, that kind of thing. Whereas cards, you know, they don't display as much, you know, they're really like a, more like assets. Whereas comic books are more like for me to display and collect. And, um, now I am changing, um, you know, one thing about my comic book collecting and I am kind of diversifying and in, in, in viewing that I need to maybe have more of a portfolio approach uh, as I keep going because, you know, they take up a lot of space and, you know, maybe I need to focus on some bigger books instead of, you know, instead of five $20 books, maybe a hundred dollar book, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and having, you know, more value in less books, uh, more of a, of a cons consolidation approach. But anyway, um, you know, and then um, speculation for another source. And now I will admit I get influenced by people putting out top 10 list, um, you know, Comic Toms, you know, um, uh, channel. You know, I do get influenced. You know, I'm like, hey, why the last man's coming out? I better go get my copy. Hey, you know, uh, in Invincible's coming. Let's sell my copy. It's gone up in value. You know, I get influenced by that. Whereas in sports cards, I very rarely get influenced to buy anything by other people and what they say. I have more experience uh, in that area, 30 plus years doing it. And I don't really feel influenced by those people. Um, 
you know, it's it's informational. It's in my data set, but I I really look at a lot of things. And another thing too between sports cards and comics. I will look up VCP, I will look up last eBay, I'll do a lot of research before I buy a card. With a comic book, if, especially if I'm at a comic book show or at a comic book store or just browse on eBay, I might just buy it because it looks cool and not even look up the last sold prices. I mean, that is common for me to do, especially with variants. So very different in how I approach it. Um, so if you look at the hobby, um, you've got, you know, between sports cards and comics, I know a lot of words on page. I'm not going to repeat everything you know to keep it focused but you know what i want to really point across here is that you know co sports cards like when i collect um you know again is more i think money uh and investment and also flipping focus so you know i, I see a lot of people who collect um cards you know around the idea of short-term flipping to buy and sell within a two or three month period um, whereas I feel like with comic books, you know, I don't do that. I buy comic books and when I do sell them, it's like I've owned them for a long period of time. Very rarely do I get short term flips on, on comic books. Um, because you know, I'm really buying a lot of stuff that's like golden age or Spider-Man or like artists and variants I like. And so I don't really feel the need to, to flip them. Whereas in cards, I have this like idea if I got Wander Franco, I better sell him now. Or, you know, because, you know, this, it's the time, like there's a lot of like timing aspects with both, you know, hobbies, but, you know, I feel like with sports cards, um, you know, there is sort of a window with some cards, uh, you know, and, and you kind of know when you missed it, whereas comic books feels like it could come back around, you know, oh, well, this character like Punisher, oh, well, he had three movies, oh, and he's got a TV show, you know. If you got 129, you know, ASM 129, you can maybe wait to the next movie, right? You know, whereas rookies is like they either make it or they break it. You know, like quarterbacks right now in football, like if they have two or three bad seasons in a row, they're done. You know, they become a backup. And then, you know, you miss your window. Um, you know, if you look at, you know, the aesthetic portion of it, you know, in comic books, you know, you really got variants. But gimmicks like foil cuts, foil die cuts, things like that, you know, have existed since the 90s. They just don't really drive a lot of sales. And they didn't, they did at one point, but they don't really make people really want to buy them alone. Um, and, you know, autographs don't really exist on a constant basis, even though there is signed comic books. But one of the things that's really different between signed comics and and, um, you know, I'll talk about it later, but, you know, like the idea of grading signed comics um, without a witness is, is hard to do in comic books, you know, versus cards, um, you know, where they produce a lot of autograph content from the manufacturers that automatically get graded and don't have any sort of uh, label issues. Um, another thing, too, is uh, alterations. You know, if you look at alterations, you know, in sports cards, it's really not accepted. You know, alterations makes the cards worth very little and a lot of people don't want them at all. Whereas in comic books, you know, it lowers the value, but they get graded that people accept them to some level. And for some uh, really rare books, it's fine. Um, and it just lowers the value. And in my general uh, thought process, it, well, it basically halves the value depending on you know, how severe the alteration is, but in, in cards, if you alter anything, if you trim a card, you know, it's pretty much, you've ruined the asset for the most part. Um, and then, you know, just in general, um, you know, what's important, you know, obviously sports teams, player, whereas in comic books, you know, it's character driven because, you know, you can't be company driven, you know, like you can't buy, um, you know, um, Batman, Marvel comic books, you know, or, not very many, um, but you know, that's, that's a DC character, right? But in, uh, sports cards, you can buy, uh, Mike Trout, Panini and tops cards. You can get Michael Jordan, upper deck cards and tops cards and Fleer cards. And so it, it's, you know, you can have, uh, you can be company specific, whereas in comic books, it's character, uh, and then cover art, artist storyline, you know, those are things yeah, that are important, but you know, it's free, it's, you know, a first appearance focus, just like rookie card focus. So those two things are similar between the two, you know, first appearances versus rookies. Um, as far as the market itself, you know, sports cards are, I think are more international. 
Um, just because the sports, especially basketball, soccer, baseball to some extent, you know, F1, you know, is becoming um, somewhat important. But, you know, comic books, you know, they made comic books in different languages. And so, you know, the, the American version may be not as important in some markets or it's just something that you don't see quite as often. I think some countries are really into American comic books, but it, it definitely feels less international than sports cards. Um, you know, for pricing, you know, you've got uh, on field of performance. You know, and I, I would just summarize it this, you know, on-field performance or speculation of future for performance is based on statistics. So baseball or sports cards in general feel like they're driven by real, um, you know, real metrics, real issues or real things that happen that you can measure and determine an outcome or predict the future. Whereas comics are really driven by hype. They're driven by rumor. They're driven by you know, trying to get ahead of the game and speculate on you know, future appearances in media and movies. And, you know, but the problem with that for, for sports cards is that if the player doesn't eventually make the Hall of Fame, you know, their cards, if you hold them a long term, they don't, they're not worth anything for the most part. Um, and if you hold them uh, too long after the rookie year, you know, you have to either keep holding them until they make the Hall of Fame or get on that path or you lose a lot of money. So like, that's the flipping aspect. Whereas comic book, and I mentioned the Punisher recently, you've got, um, you know, the idea that, you know, like a character like that, you could speculate on because a movie was coming out or a TV show, but let's say it's not very popular. You can just wait till the next movie it comes out. Maybe he's going to be in, in an Avengers movie or whatever. You know, like comic books don't have that, I think that timing aspect where, in, in sports cards, like if the dude is done, he's done. Like he's never coming back around, you know, like they're, ne you're not going to resurrect their career once they're out of the league in comic books, a character might be a dead character. And all of a sudden some artist likes him, pits him in a new book. And then that book gets pitched and all of a sudden, you know, the, he, you know, he becomes popular, you know, Captain Marvel is a good example of a character who got popular kind of well after the fact of creation. You know, I think that could happen. So, um, and again, alterations, we mentioned that, but I think on sports cards, you have to be very careful that there's so much more alter, altered cards uh, in slabs than I think in comic book and slabs. I may be wrong. I know there's trimming in comic books, but the idea around, you know, the, the amount of fake and, 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 and altered cards in holders, and you saw the Real Sports HBO documentary where they said basically like, look, there is millions of dollars of fake cards every year. Um, and it's a real issue that they're looking for in comic books. I don't know if we're seeing that same level. Uh, I don't sense it, but I could be wrong. Um, and then the idea of like these secondary generated autographs on cards are just not really always worth more. Like if you go out and get your 86 tops, Nolan Ryan card signed, it's not going to be worth more than a Nolan Ryan card to come right out of a pack. That's, you know, guaranteed by the company. Um, versus in general, all comic books that are signed by artists or creators are generally worth more. It just, it's how it works. I mean, Stanley's autograph on any comic book makes it worth more. Um, generally the artist who made the comic book cover autograph makes it worth more regardless of when it was signed. It's just how it is. And so those, those are two very different things. Also the idea of you know, if you get a comic book signed and it's not witnessed by CGC, they won't give it the yellow label. Whereas PSA will grade it like a normal you know, autograph card. Now they kind of designate it a little differently, but they'll grade it with a regular label. So, you know, green label for CGC versus yellow. Whereas in PSA, you get the regular label, but people don't really care about those cards as much as, as they do in comic books. And that's an interesting difference in the market. Um, community. Um, so this is where, you know, you know, um, I think that there is some differences too. you know, I'll get this, give the sports card guys, they, they seem to be, you know, much more open to the idea of collecting comic books, uh, comic book cards, um, other parts of the comic, you know, um, uh, collectibles area, they seem to be more open to it. Um, Whereas comic book guys seem to be less open to sports related collecting. 
And I've seen multiple forum posts where they kind of make fun of uh, sports card guys and that, you know, you know, like the nineties, you know, the cards aren't worth anything. You know, I feel like they, they, they kind of made a meme out of that. And now they're kind of like having to eat their you know, words a little bit, but that was definitely a thing where it was like, Oh, comic books, you know, were the safe investment of the nineties and car and card guys ruined their hobby. Well, it's kind of gone back, you know, to where they're both very healthy, but sports cards are definitely in the driver's seat right now. Um, another thing is, you know, you're going to be more likely to be ripped off by someone selling you sports cards. You know, that's been my experience that I'm going to get ripped off. I'm going to have people give me fake cards, the wrong cards. My God, how many non refractor refractors I've bought off eBay. Um, you know, kills me and, you know, it's just, it's like the whole hobby almost has a mentality of trying to get one over on you and you need all, you know, you need grading and all these other, you know, knowledge to protect yourself. Whereas comic books feels like it's a little bit more community based. I don't see as many dealers. I know there's bad stuff happening in that area as well, but it doesn't feel quite to the level like with sports cards. Um, now, you know, one thing that's very interesting also is trading, you know, in sports cards, trading is something I see very often. I've done tons of trading. I've never traded a single comic book in my life at a show, as a dealer. I've never been asked to do a trade. I've never set up, I've set up at multiple shows at comic book conventions. I've never had a single person come and say, I want to trade you my ASM 129 for your Hulk one or whatever like this doesn't happen they sell me the book and then buy something but never been asked to do a trade i think it's really odd that the two hobbies which have some so many things in common don't have trading involved and, and they'll you know in comic or sorry in cards they'll trade at shows on instagram shops have trade days comic books don't really have that and it's a really interesting thing that comic books aren't really into trading um and again i do feel like a comic book collectors are going to be interested in runs of characters, sets, titles, you know, trying to put stuff together and, you know, but they won't have like 50 of one book, you know, as often as a card collector will have 50 of a, of a prospect or of a, of a card they're invested in. Um, you know, I know it can happen in both ways, but it just feels like I don't see guys hoarding, you know, 50, 100 giant size X-Men ones as often as I see people hoarding 86 Jordans, right? It just, you know, I think there is some differences there in, in the hoarding mentality. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, I enjoy doing both. You know, when I collect comic books, it's more of a feel gut thing. I am kind of morphing into like portfolio building. But if I see a cool comic book cover, I just buy it. If I, if you know, if it doesn't seem like it's a crazy amount of money. And sports cards, it's more analytical. I'm looking at you know, statistics, the player trends, I'm looking at past sales, you know, I'm doing a lot more work when I buy sports cards than I do comics. And so that's how it is. And you know, that's how I collect and that's how I view it. Now, let me know your thoughts and how you think about the two, if you do both collecting or how you collect other hobbies like toys or games, you know, and just kind of how you compare the two. This is my comparison. This is my experience. Now, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time.